on uh, the Justice Verma Committee report. Specifically, I apologize if my talk is not as comprehensive as it should be. Um, as you all perhaps know, the Justice Verma Committee was set up after the rape case in Delhi, which had a tremendous response amongst others, um, uh, from amongst other normal actors from uh, sections of youth in the country, uh, throughout the country. It started from Delhi, and women's organizations and groups came out in against this uh, rape law and uh, the implementation of the law more specifically. And apart from that, the youth of different places, youth came out in large numbers, as Anuradha just said, both boys and girls. And what what was, uh, so there is several issues. And one of the issues was that why do we have laws if they are not implemented? Why are we being not safe in India? And why has the government not done anything about it? In Delhi particularly, where the incidence of rape is very high, as compared to some other parts of this very country, the question is, uh, and the, the fact that this issue has been repeatedly raised by women's organizations, by group, why is it that the government has paid no heed? Why is Delhi not even lighted? Why is it that in a bus, which is a public transport, which uh, a, a woman can be so readily raped, a young girl, and, uh, you know, brutalized and then left on the street? And why does it take for justice? Uh, why does it take so long for justice to be given to anybody in this country? So these were the questions that were raised. Some of the other issues that came up were, why is it that women are always blamed for what they wear and how they speak, rather than, uh, you know, looking at the rapist? Why is she targeted? Why is her dress targeted? and so on. So some of these issues which came up were taken up. The government in haste set up one committee after another. However, they didn't realize when they were setting up the uh, Varma committee what perhaps its outcome would be. Because the Varma committee came out with a comprehensive set of proposals. It is really one of the most complete, I mean, it, it documents the certain key areas where women's rights have been neglected by the state. And it attempts to suggest a way forward. And the fact that the report was written in one month shows how much work can be done in one month and how a report can be delivered in such a short time. But and therefore, the Varma committee uh, members even suggested that, you know, the government should implement the law in a short while also and put mechanisms into place. The Varma committee report was, however, the, the very fact that its strength lay in the fa in this fact that it gave its report in one month. Of course, it had a wide array of uh, experts. <coughs> who gave uh, substance to the report, who, uh, you know, gave evidence before the committee. But apart from that, certain areas did get neglected. So its strength was its weakness in certain areas. And I shall, I think, touch upon the whole law of sexual assault, which it, which it uh, attempted to change. I'm sorry. Just put it off. People don't stop. <laughs> so, um, yes, so what was the greatness of the Varma Committee report? A, that it was comprehensive in character. B, that it sought to give a certain direction to the government and, point, and pointed out where the, uh, where the government hadn't been active in independent India and see that it sought to 
show the way forward by actually giving recommendations for change of laws. And it did so in certain crucial areas. One, the report begins, in fact, by emphasizing that the actions of those in authority, it, it was a critique of the government of India. It was a critique of the legislature. And it was a critique of those, the executive power, those in, with the executive power. And it pointed out that the actions of those in authority have been in conflict with the constitutional principle of equality. It, it went on to say that the governments, though elected, are bound to act in tandem with the constitution. So it said that just because a government is elected, it doesn't mean that after that it can do anything that it wants or not do anything that it wants. And interestingly, while arguing in terms of Article 14, it said that Article 14 does not only say that uh, women are uh, equal before law, but they are also entitled to equal protection of the law. And that emphasizes the fact that it has a dual, there is a mandate to the government to set in place institutions and mechanisms to protect women or to provide them uh, uh, justice. And this was uh, this was one of the key uh, points that the Verma Committee made and also pointed out that the, not only is the government bound by the constitution, but so is the legislature. It said that there are the two kinds of injunctions that the constitution gives, is that the state should be a non-violator and in addition, the state is also an, under an affirmative obligation to secure the conditions for the right, for instance, for the rights in the Constitution, for instance, the right of equality. And uh, then, after this, it uh, went on to um, talk about various issues and the triple burden that, and or the triple discrimination rather that women faces and said because of course of the fact that she's a woman, because she belongs to a caste or community or tribe, and because she is poor. And said that India had an obligation under CEDAW. It reiterated that. Many judgments had said that, but it reiterated that India had an obligation under CEDAW as a signatory to adhere to the principles set down in the convention. One of the things that the report did was suggest that India bring into effect a Bill of Rights for Women, which will detail the concept of equality and non-discrimination in various spheres of our lives. And it in fact gave a kind of draft of this Bill of Rights. And it's interesting that um, this has been suggested because while certain countries have laws of non-discrimination, India doesn't. India has a constitution which specifically gives the right of equality to women. And India has in Article 15, an article which states that no woman, no person on account of their sex can be discriminated again, against. And specifically, that special laws can be made in favor of women. But uh, what does non-discrimination mean? It, the Burma Committee gives content and defines non-discrimination and equality in various spheres. For instance, it sets out the right to life, security, and bodily integrity, and, in, and states that under this, for instance, right to life, security, and bodily integrity, every woman has the right to be respected as an independent person and to free development of her personality. It further states that every woman has a right to express and experience 
complete sexual autonomy, including with respect to her relationships and choice of partners. Whereas in India at the moment, this is a right which is really not at all recognized or respected. And we'll come to that later. It also states that the state shall ensure to every woman protection from all forms of violence. So it's a mandate against the state that the state has to take action. Not that the state can sleep as it has been doing for the past 60 years without passing laws which, which women needed and which women's organizations and groups have been agitating for and fighting for for the last 20 or 30 years. It spells out democratic and civil rights. For instance, the right to freedom of thought, the right to manifest that person's religion or belief, the freedom of expression, the right to peaceful assembly, etc. Which are a reiteration of some of the rights in the Constitution. Then most importantly, it talks of the right to equality and non-discrimination and states that no person shall be unfairly discriminated of, on grounds of gender, including an area in which women are discriminated against in all personal laws in India, and that is preventing women from inheriting family property. So, and any practice which is traditional, customary or religious that impairs the dignity of women. Discrimination on the ground of pregnancy and so on. It also again reiterates that every woman shall have the freedom to marry any person of her choice and be regarded as an equal partner in the marriage. It states that every woman shall have the same rights in cases of separation, divorce, and annulment of women, annulment of marriage. You know that in India, women's groups, I don't know whether the, this house knows that, but they, we have been fighting for a right to marital property for the past few years. And there have been several bills uh, which have been suggested by women's groups. There's a bill in Mumbai. There's a bill which Edward, the All India Democratic Women's Association has suggested. And then there have been amendments to the law from the side of the government. Actually, the, um, an amendment to the Hindu Marriage Act, in which the government wanted to introduce irretrievable breakdown of marriage as a ground of divorce. Till now, irretrievable breakdown of marriage as a ground of divorce didn't exist. And uh, the government thought it would have a relatively easy time doing that. However, women's organizations and groups protested against this because they said, how can you allow